Yikes! This dragon! <laughs> hey there, we're on our way from Virginia to Pennsylvania today, and we're gonna do a stop at a gas station to fill up, but we're also gonna do what? Uh, we're going to top off our two five gallon diesel cans. We had one of them had stuff in it that we uh, was maybe six plus months old. That's about as long as I wanna keep it in there, so we put that in the truck. And now, and actually diesel is cheaper now than back when we got it. Mm -hmm. So we've now filled up our two uh, cans and we'll keep those in there for six to nine months, depending on when we have other reasons to use it. To Just a little place. extra precaution, always carry a little extra diesel with us. Yep. So thanks for coming along today. Glad to see you. we've made it to Lancaster County and as you know my parents live here so we come through here once or twice a year but we're at a new campground this time Pennsylvania Dutch Country or PA Dutch Country Thousand Trails and it looks like a lovely campground we'll show you uh, that a little bit later but one thing that you surely know about Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. If you know anything, you know that this is Amish country. And so one thing that we love to do when we come to Lancaster County is eat at Pennsylvania Dutch restaurants or smorgasbords or buffets. They are so delicious and fun. And we just found a new one that we've never been to before, Dutch Way. So we're gonna try it out for dinner. The Amish people are sometimes referred to as Pennsylvania Dutch, especially in this area. And uh, you might not know, though, that they're not actually Dutch. The word Dutch comes from Deutsch, Pennsylvania Deutsch. And Deutsch is the German word for German. So really, it means Pennsylvania German. But over the years and after they immigrated to the United States, it just uh, evolved until it became Dutch instead of Deutsch. So Pennsylvania Dutch or Amish. And these... And these Pennsylvania Dutch smorgasbord buffets are usually combined with a Dutch, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch grocery store, which always has really yummy Amish food and desserts at it. You might remember that Maine whoopie pies are my very favorite dessert and I love to get them when I'm in Maine. Now, Lancaster has their own version of whoopie pies and there is some debate about where the whoopie pie was invented. Of course, we believe it was invented in Maine, but we're gonna get some Lancaster whoopie pies. Now, the cookies are a little thinner and they have a different kind of cream in them, which just makes them different from the Maine ones, but I've been without whoopie pies for so long now, I'm just gonna dive into some Lancaster ones. <laughs> Oh, that was delicious. I am so full. A lot of starch in German cooking. A lot of potatoes, a lot of corn, a lot of pie. 
<laughs> it's a nice treat. Hey, it's a rainy day here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. We have come over to the President Eisenhower's Gettysburg Farm. This is where he retired to after he left the presidency, and he used this during the presidency as well to host world leaders and as a vacation home and things like that. So uh, it's a free tour. It's part of the Gettysburg National Military Park, and we've just come here for a tour today. Now we have done the Gettysburg Battlefield before, which is a great site, especially if you're interested in American and Civil War history, that's well worth it. But we've never done this Eisenhower site before, so we're gonna just do a little free tour. We learned about this site when we were at the Eisenhower Presidential Museum and Library in Kansas uh, last year. We were driving on our way back across the country through Kansas, happened to see that the Eisenhower Library was there off the highway, and so we pulled over and had a wonderful afternoon there. It was well worth a visit. And there we learned that he had this farm in Gettysburg, and I knew that since my parents lived nearby, we would eventually be back here, so we just put it on our map as a stop that we wanted to see. President retired to his farm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. President, is retirement all it's cracked up to be? Well, my wife thinks it's nothing but a uh, word in the dictionary. I think I'm more more demands made upon me personally than I have ever had in my life. I think and hope, pray, that the humanity will learn more than we have learned up to that time. So every time I'm coming back, to um, these beaches, or when, any day when I think about that day 20 years ago, I say once more, we must find some way to work to, to peace and to really to gain an eternal peace for this world. Well, a very nice self-guided tour. There was a little part at the beginning where the ranger told us some of Ike's history and the history of the house, and then they just let, give you this little book and let you go through the house. Very interesting because it's all furnished with, they said 98% of what's in the house is original to the Eisenhowers, 
it's decorated as it was in 1967 um, when they left the house and uh, totally 50s vibe and there you can see all of the original you know furnishings and paintings that President Eisenhower painted and all of the pink bathroom the tile and the, the pink um, towels and everything so cute well worth a visit so we've been enjoying this campground, PA Dutch Country, Thousand Trails, uh, north of Lancaster, PA. And I just wanted to give you a little overview, but I'm coming out here to the RV because the water pressure here has just tanked. Um, at the beginning it was slow but usable, but as we've gone over the days, it's just become unusable. So what we're doing is we're just filling our fresh water tank in the RV and then running off of that because the RV pump has better pressure than the campground water. But no big deal, a few days, every few days we just come out and fill the water. I haven't even mentioned it to the campground since we're just managing it ourselves, but I don't know how anybody around here can function with this water pressure. <laughs> so actually, I went to test the pressure in the spigot again just to make sure it was still low, and it's coming out fine. So then that led me on a, a goose chase down the line here uh, to see where this pressure issue is, and I figured out that it's this cheap old green um, water filter that we have on here that's restricting the flow. This was something that I got on sale. I was just trying it for a while, but it doesn't last as long as the Camco blue filter. So I'm just going to switch this out to a new filter and we're good to go. I always keep an extra one of those blue filters on hand. So I have it exactly when I need it. And I'll put a link in the description below of where you can get one on Amazon. I normally replace these blue filters every three months, but I've noticed that these green ones, I had two of them and they've only lasted for about two months. So that's a good uh, tip for you that if you're, if something's wrong with your water, don't assume that it's the campground water. Don't assume that it's something wrong with your RV. Check the whole line. It could be your hose. It could be your connection of the hose to the RV. It could be your filter. So I just want to show you a little bit of this campground. Um, it's very peaceful, nice and wooded, lots of trees here and kind of up on some hills four different loop areas that make it great to walk in. There's a nice wood trail, um, like hiking trail that goes in the woods all the way around the outside of the park. There is a little bit of road noise here, but nothing unusual. Um, and there's lots of empty spots, though they just did open last weekend for the first time. Um, I think they opened the weekend before that for the annual people, uh, seasonal people. But anyway, there's lots of empty spots. Uh, it's late April right now, so the weather has been in the 50s and 60s. So very pleasant, a um, little bit of rain. But anyway, it's very nice campground, standard thousand trails. It's got a mini golf, a pool, a playground. And um, I will say that it doesn't seem to be very well staffed here. The, the store has been closed um, for quite a while. And I think maybe it just opens on the weekends when there's more people here but there's often not anybody at the gate, you know, and you just punch in your code and that's fine. But it just seems a little bit like understaffed. So I don't know, not a big deal. Um, and then this like members lounge, Thousand Trails members lounge is one of the nicest ones I've ever seen. It's basically a house. It's a split level ranch. The office is also in there in like the Thousand Trails membership center, but there's a beautiful, um, living room in there with a library, a full kitchen, and a living room with a TV. You can just go hang out in there. It's, it's very peaceful and quiet. I, I like sitting up there sometimes. Uh, so overall, very nice campground. If you're in the Lancaster area, you're visiting Pennsylvania Dutch country, or want to see some Amish people, this is a great choice. But we like to stay close to Lancaster because of my parents. So um, yeah, glad we tried this one out for the first time. Guys, I normally wouldn't go around recommending gas station food, okay? But we, when we were in Virginia last year, heading down to Florida, we somehow stumbled across a gas station called Royal Farms that purported to have the best fried chicken in the world. Well, of course we had to try it. It was so good. We like it better than KFC, better than Popeyes, better than anything. And they're only in the mid-Atlantic states, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia. So now that we're back in Pennsylvania, we are making a special trip to Royal Farms to get some fried chicken. <laughs> you are so weird. You're weird. I told you. How do you call it? Is
you need a you need a live shot of, of eating a gas station chicken. Is that what you're going for there? That's pretty... <laughs> Lovely rainy day down by the river. Coating on this is so nice. Hmm. No, we haven't had potatoes yet. And plus, you just do it eight X times and then a fun little montage. I see what you're saying. See? If you want four seconds of video, you gotta film five minutes of it. And then you have to work on it for five hours. Yep. And then you're an influencer. What is YouTube for if not to show people mundane things? 